Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back. We are back here with Into the Breach, having just finished our third island. And now we're entering the final stretch here as we make our way to island number four, Detritus Disposal. Detritus tech can break down anything into its base elements. Their factory cities are devoted to waste removal and recycling. CEO's Vikram Singh, and the environment is industrial. Hmm. We'll get into that in a minute, but before we do any of that, we still have two power cells to spend here, two reactor cores to upgrade our mechs with. Now, I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I think we're actually going to put it into our artillery mech for the time being. What we're going to do is we're going to give him two cores, put one into health, and one into damage. Specifically damage for the Gemini missiles. The idea here is we're actually waiting to get them one more power so that we can instead upgrade the basic artillery to three damage because that would make the artillery mech much more useful in general combat. But if we have these Gemini missiles at four damage twice per battle, that means they've already got a lot of firepower. So either way, this is a good upgrade for that piece of uh, equipment there. Since our punching mech already is up to four damage punches and the tank has double shot, we have some pretty good firepower here as it is, and I think that makes the most sense for the time being. So, with that said, let's get a move on. We're going to head over to Detritus Disposal and see what's up. I have heard of your triumphs against the Vec, Commander. We hope you and the Riftwalkers can aid us in our fight as well. All right, well, what do we have going on here? We have a fairly straightforward map. We're starting in one corner. We kind of have a distance to go. We're going to go for all of these two-star events as usual. We want to get as much of our corporate reputation as we can possibly get our hands on. So the real question is, do we do waste chambers or the landfill? Hmm. Either of these could be interesting. They both involve protecting terrain and another additional challenge. But I think we're going to go to the landfill just for the opportunity to try out these conveyor belts. Because I don't know if we're going to get those otherwise. Once we get on the map, we'll talk about any differences about this specific island. But let's go check it out first. Hmm, that looks unpleasant. Normally we use conveyor yards to ferry waste vats. But you and the Riftwalkers may be able to use the conveyors against the Vec. All right, well, let's get in there and see what's what. So, this map is very similar to the other ones we've been on. It only gives us three starting locations, which is a little worrying. And you'll also notice it has an acid tile. What acid does is it basically acts like water, if it's in a deep quantity like this, where an enemy who falls into it will drown. But an enemy that doesn't drown will be afflicted with a status effect that basically makes them take double damage afterwards, which is pretty darn powerful, turns out. So let's see how we want to place our units here. I don't really know where we want them to go, but let's go with this for now, because this way if anything comes in this line, we can absolutely blast them with our cannon mech. Now, with the enemies we have here, we have a Blood Scion, which is a new type of Scion. And what it does is it gives all of the enemies health regeneration at the start of their turn, which actually makes it one of the least dangerous Scions in the game. Because while it means that they'll recover more damage over time, it doesn't give them any effects that prevent us from killing them in one turn. We also have a Hornet. We have an Alpha Hornet, which is going to do more damage over two tiles. And we have an Alpha Spider. These guys are kind of nasty, because what they do is they throw a web that ties enemies in down from range, and if you don't kill it, it turns into a spider enemy. So that might be a problem for us. We also have conveyor tiles here, which push enemies in the direction they're facing. Now, I don't necessarily know how a number of tiles like this interact. As far as I know, each conveyor only moves someone one tile on any given turn. So if something is standing here, it'll get dropped in the acid. But if something's standing here, it'll just get moved over to this space. We'll see how it plays out once it's actually in practice, though. Let's confirm our placements and see what happens here. All right, they're going immediately for the double stab, going for our power generator, which we need to protect. And the spider, presumably, yeah, is going to web us up. Okay, 
Well, that's not incredible, but we can deal. So this guy has four health, which means we can just punch him to death with our punching mech. That's exactly what he's here for. Now, depending on what we want to do with the rest of these guys, we'll see what happens. We're probably just going to shoot this thing to get rid of the spider and then shoot this guy again. The problem is, since we're only doing two damage, he will regenerate that if we don't kill the uh, Scion here. Now, an alternative is this guy's not actually doing anything dangerous. If I want, I could come over here and dash down and punch the Scion here to death in one go. I think it's probably better to kill the Alpha Hornet, though. With our armored artillery, we could come over this way and then fire something down to kill either the Hornet or the Blood Scion. The problem is, though, our artillery still only does one damage, so we'd have to use the Gemini missiles to actually kill anything. We don't really have the range of movement for that, although if we can get over to here, then we can kill this guy with it. Which is probably a good idea, because we want to make sure he doesn't attack our power generator. Now, the only other question is, is there some better play here we can make using our boost? For example, if we were to boost over this way, we could shove them side by side, but that doesn't make any significant difference here. I suspect, though, just killing this spider spawn, hitting him once, and setting up to try and do something else here would probably be our best play. This guy will be a little bit annoying, and the Scion is going to mean that our tank doesn't do a whole lot of damage to him if we're only shooting him once. But it's probably still for the best. The alternative would be to do some kind of fancy play to try and maneuver them into a position where they're both side by side so the artillery can vaporize them. Because right now, if the artillery gets in a position it can shoot the spider boss, it'll just kill him outright with the Gemini missiles. And it can get to this position if we want it to, if we kill this enemy first, but then the tank would have to take care of this guy, which would be a little bit more awkward. I think as it stands, we're just going to clear out the spider egg. We're then going to shoot again to shoot the spider. With our punching mech, we're going to come over here and punch the Alpha Hornet to death. We can then move again, but I might hold off on that first. We can bring our artillery over to here, because we're going to go for the kill on this guy rather than just the disable, I think. It's going to burn a Gemini missile here. It's super overkill, but I'm okay with it. And do I want to move this mech again? I think I do. I think I'm going to move my punching mech over to here. And with that, we're going to end our turn. And see what's what. I don't know what this is. I've never seen either of those, and apparently one of them is an alpha, which is worrying. What are you? You're an alpha burrower. The Vec will hide underground after taking one or more damage. That sounds nasty. Okay. They're also stable. They can't be moved by any weapon effect. That's unfortunate, because I was just thinking, oh, all we have to do is punch them, and he'll punch into this egg and kill both of them. But no, he will not. What about this one? Does it do the same thing? They slam against three tiles in a row for one damage normally, but they also have Burrower and Stable. Okay. And he hits them for two tiles instead. So our tank can kill the Alpha Spider just by hitting it one time. Is there a fancier play we can do here, though? Because there are a lot of little things we have options for here. I'm just trying to see what our most efficient maneuver is. The problem that this thing is tied up is going to be a problem for us, though. I can certainly kill the Alpha by punching him with our mech and then shooting him with the artillery, but shooting him with the artillery has some largely downsides in that it also hits our artillery with the uh, shot. Abe is armored, so he won't take any damage from this attack. He can just sit here, it's fine, but pushing this into him will hurt him. It does also kill the egg, though, so that's maybe not a bad idea. The alternative would be to try and do something over here, but I think we're just going to use our tank to kill the spider. We could bring the tank over and shoot this guy, but that would just kill him outright, which means we don't get the benefit of blocking the spawn, which would have been fun. Is there anything else that's worth doing? I think we just want to kill this alpha before it gives us more trouble and kill the spider. The scion here is really not that important because it doesn't threaten anything, and we tend to kill everything in one turn anyway except for cases like the spider here, where it would have been nice if he didn't heal because then I could kill him in one shot, but 
we'll take what we can get. So let's use our tank here to kill this spider, punch him, and then the artillery will ricochet them around a little bit. It will bring the blood scion down to one and our combat mech down to two, but we should be able to survive that. So let's do it. Actually, I can move our mech out the way, because it isn't webbed. So now we can maneuver. Oh! What just happened? I'm going to have to watch that back. Why did it die? Why did it die, though? Does it still bounce? It didn't bounce, because the, the, the egg didn't take any damage. The punch only does four damage. Did I... Hmm. Alright, I have no idea why that happened. Let's kill the spider. Yeah, that is uh, somewhat baffling, I have to admit. I'm not really sure what to do about that. Okay. Because I can just ignore this guy's attack. It doesn't matter. I may want to try and kill this egg by bouncing it off myself. But if I do that, I'm going to move the mech out the way. Because just hitting this for one doesn't do anything. Because it's going to regenerate that at the start of its turn anyway. We have two enemies spawning in. Which means I'm probably going to want to keep our punching mech on this side of the map. Just in case. And let's clear that egg. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to have to watch that back. I don't know why that bug died. Let's end our turn, though, and see what happens. So we move down one, which is fine. Armor protects us from that one damage. We have another Alpha Wasp. We have another Alpha over here as well. Oh, it didn't kill it. It burrowed. Of course it did. After taking one damage, it burrows. I didn't realize that means it just disappears. Does that So you can just disable their turn by hurting them, but it doesn't actually kill them, it just makes them hide. Interesting. We've got a lot of nasty bugs around here. We're probably going to have to deal with them. So they're all stable, right? Which means that if I move our tank over to here and fire, it will not push him. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of badness on the map right now that we're going to have to deal with. Now I can bounce this guy to hit him for one, and then shove him over so he attacks our bug enemy here, and since he does three damage, he'll kill him outright. He goes after him, so all I have to do is not be standing in the way here, which is fine by me. Nothing else here is actually attacking us, so that shouldn't be too bad. Now, I think that's probably our best play to remove this guy, because we can ignore this one. Is there a better play with the tank here? I don't think so. So let's boost to here and bounce him off the wall. It will break the mountain, but that's what we want. And since that doesn't count as a move, we can then shoot him again. There we go. Now we do want to kill this Alpha Hornet, just because he's going to be trouble otherwise. The Alpha Burrower, I don't know exactly what we want to do. I would like to be able to kill him, so we can kill him with the rockets if we need to, by just backing up and Gemini missiling him. But I don't know if that's really necessary. There might be a fancier way to do it. If we were to use the artillery, we can bounce him off something, but since that only does one damage, it gets auto-healed by the Blood Scion. And that's not enough to actually end him, so it's probably not worth it. It may be worth it just to Gemini Missile him, just to be sure. It would be cool if we were actually over here, because then I could Gemini Missile both of these guys, but that would waste this attack and make our uh, power generator be at risk again, so... Wouldn't be the best play either way. Because yeah, we can do one damage to a bunch of these enemies by firing an artillery right on top of this guy. But that doesn't actually matter, because we're going to one-shot this bug. There we go. And we're going to move ourselves out of the way, I think, over to here. 
Is that the better move? I think so. And we're going to use our artillery to end this here bug. It's nice to have a scion enemy that we can effectively ignore, because up until now that was definitely not the case. Question is, where do I want to stand? We know an enemy is about to spawn here, which means I can probably safely stand over here, but right now all of our allies are over here. This might be better just for giving us a clean line of sight to our allies if we need it. So, let's drop a rocket on this bug. Problem solved. And now if we end turn... Burrower misses. The Alpha Firefly kills the Burrower, and they get a Leaper. Okay. An Alpha Leaper, too, by the looks of it. Well, that is kind of annoying. The Alpha Leaper is one of the few enemies that I did not want to see here, because it's one that can, in fact, tie down our artillery. But, because we can just zoom over there and punch it to death, it doesn't really matter here. Our tank can take out the Firefly no problem. The Blood Scion might actually get to live through the whole battle, which is kind of unusual, but so it goes. Now, can I kill this guy if we use the mech to punch him and we use the tank to shoot him? I don't think so. We just don't quite have the damage. But I can kill them all either way. Let's do the long range super punch. There we go. And we can move again. Is there a way I can kill him by bouncing him off me? I don't think so. Maybe there is, actually. Yeah, I think there is a maneuver that allows us to kill both of them, even though it requires us to hurt ourselves. What we do is we take our artillery, we stand it here, we fire the artillery into the middle, that bounces the Scion off of the uh, punching mech, and bounces this guy off our tank. Then we shoot him with the tank and then jump into this position, which bounces him off our mech again, killing them both. We're not killing them both. It doesn't kill our mech, obviously, but it kills the uh, the bug here. Like so. There we go. We got both kills. Now that everything is dead, we can end our turn. There we go. The Riftwalkers are heroes. Okay. The conveyor yard is secured. Thank you, Commander. We had not thought to use the conveyor belts in a military capacity. We took less than three damage, and we protected the power generator, which is great. Our final pilot here is approaching max level, and we got a thousand civilians protected. Alright, time to go to reprocessing, because we want those two-star missions, so we're going to do all three of these for sure. We also got our grid defense up to 25%, which is pretty nice. We have to destroy all the mountains. Well then. Time to use a silly super weapon. Let's go. We need the Rift Walkers to defend this acid launcher while it dissolves the Vec hives infesting the mountains. Let's do it. They're gonna get a lot of big bugs right off the bat. Alpha Firefly, Alpha Hornet, Alpha Spider, Alpha Burrower. But we get an acid launcher <laughs> and that makes all the difference so let's block the way here I think we don't want them getting through that line if we can help it although I don't think we can stop them I'm pretty sure the burrower just goes wherever it wants and this guy can fly so he can kind of go wherever he wants <laughs> but overall I think this might be able to stop some of them so let's go and see what happens here We got a time pod coming in. Blood Scion right away. Burrower does show up behind us, which is not good. Thankfully, we can just punch him and he'll be disabled. They've tied us down, which is also not good. So we're going to have to deal with all of this mess. Now, what we have is an acid launcher. And the Acid Launcher has one simple ability. 
Fire a plus-shaped beacon of death that destroys everything it touches. We need to use these to destroy these mountain tiles. We have to take at least two turns during the battle to destroy them. But if we can, we want to try and shred some of these other enemies to make things easier for us. Now, we know that we have to get our mech out the way if I want to dissolve these three. But, since we're now tied down, we're probably going to have to punch this and then move, which is not quite what I wanted. Now, we know this guy burrows if he takes one or more damage. So if we hit him once, he'll stop attacking us this turn, so we can just hit him with the artillery and get him out of the way. And if we shoot the Alpha Firefly with our tank, we can push him onto this position, but then we can't necessarily actually do a whole lot else. So what we're probably going to do instead is maneuver the tank around to here and shoot him once from the side, because that way his attack misses us. And we still pick up the Time Pod, and he takes three damage, which is a little bit better than not picking up the Time Pod and dealing four and getting shot and killed. So, that's what we're going to need to do there, I think. This should work out just fine. Let's move our tank around to the time pod first. Shoot this guy once from the side. There we go. We're going to punch the egg and get out of the way because we do not want to be standing in that death radius. We're going to back our artillery up to here and shoot him one time, which makes him hide and ends his attack. And we disintegrate these three bugs. Done. Done and done. It also leaves acid pools on the ground. And that's pretty cool. Because now these pools of acid allow us to inflict that double damage debuff on anything that steps in those spaces. So let's end our turn and go from here. Over the next turns, we have to spend two of them attacking these mountains. We're probably going to be doing that with most of our turns here. This is a little problematic, but shouldn't be anything we can't handle. I was hoping to be able to move around to this side to attack him, but all I have to do is boop this guy one time, and we can just punch him outright. Now... I think this is definitely going to be an aciding the mountains turn, so let's start by doing that. Alright, we have disintegrated some mountains. We need to punch this guy directly. We're probably going to use the artillery to hide this burrower, although I could go for a rocket strike on them and just kill them outright. Since we have those upgraded Gemini missiles, we might as well use them. That allows us to kill all of these enemies this turn, which is definitely in our best interest. So let's kill the bug here. Let's rocket artillery for 8 damage, because this guy's acid affected, so he's doubled. That seems like a good turn. Let's start by punching this one to death. He's done. And rocketing this one to death. He is also done. And now, Abe has leveled up, and he gets an additional mech movement in addition to his mech reactor power, which is pretty solid. This is a powerful mech pilot we have here. So, things are looking pretty good. We can reposition Archimedes if we want. Do I want to? I might move over to here. Yeah, let's move over to here, just so that we have some extra coverage on these two spawns, just in case. And we will end our turn. Two Leapers, but they've just jumped into Acid. Two Alpha Leapers, in fact, which is also worrying. Okay, we can punch this one to death, no problem. He'll be dead. Or we can push him onto this tile and he'll block a spawn and it'll free up our artillery, our other punching mech. We can kill either of these guys with the artillery or with the punching mech. So we should be okay. I think blocking one of those spawns is a fine strategy because it'll also kill him if we use the mech to shoot it. Use our cannon mech specifically, I mean. The artillery is probably going to Gemini Missile one of those guys. We only have two new spawns to worry about, and we have the Acid Launcher. We can drop on them if we need to, so I think that's probably good. Let's rocket this out of the way. 
we're going to mech punch this guy for a colossal amount of damage and Gemini missile on both sides of our of our punching mech just for that added fun factor and then we're going to acid launch and destroy the remaining mountains and we should be in pretty good shape now okay let's end our turn we have some actions available to us but we actually don't need them I could shoot him again but it's not as good as leaving him there Blocked enemy, and he's done. Alright, they've decided not to move, but that's fine. We can just kill them outright anyway. So probably our best strategy here is to take the artillery to here, fire one shell on him, and push him into the acid. I don't think it really matters, because we can definitely clear these guys either way. But since he's in the acid now, our mech can punch him to death. And our tank can finish off the remaining bug. We also have an Acid Strike we could use if we want, but we don't need it, so we're not going to waste it. Job is done. Enemies are destroyed. Alright, that went pretty smoothly. Turns out having a giant Acid Cannon makes things a little bit easier. Your mission was a success, Commander. The Acid Launcher is intact and the Vec disintegrated. Very nice. We also got a Time Pod. We'll see what's in that in a second. Ooh, we got Prospero, um, another uh, AI pilot here who can give the mech a flying ability if it doesn't have it already, which is pretty cool. And a reactor core. Not bad. We've unlocked Prospero for future missions, and we've promoted Abe to get that extra mech power. We've got a Come Together achievement for getting six additional pilots. And we've completed reprocessing. All right. We're going to take that additional power here and give it to Abe. And we're probably going to pump it straight into the Artemis artillery damage and take it out of the Gemini missile damage, because often that four damage is overkill, but three on a single target would be really nice. So let's take it out of the movement, and I could take it out of the health even if I wanted, but I kind of like having the four health since he's armored so we can ignore one. Makes him a lot tougher. I could take it out of one damage or one use of the Gemini missiles. Which do I care more about? The fact that we can fire those twice, or the fact that they do four damage? Let's take it out of one use for now. Oh, I have to take it out of two things. Hmm. No, I have to give him one power. There we go. That's more like it. So now our artillery is a lot more dangerous. We may come back and give it an additional use of the Gemini missiles later, but I think having it do four damage one time, whereas this one can do three damage all the time, just gives us a little bit more versatility in combat. And that should be good for us. Prospero, we're probably not going to use. I quite like having Abe here on the artillery, and Silica and Archimedes have done quite well as well. So, with that said, I think we're going to go for one more battle this time, make this a little bit of a longer episode. So let's go over to the scrap heap. Here we have to defend the train. I've heard of missions like this, where we have to defend a train, but I've never actually seen one, so I don't know what they involve. Let's get in here and find out. Our trains seem to provoke the Vec. Whether it's the chemicals or the vibration, we don't know, but the Vec attacked them on sight. Alright, let's get in there and defend a train. Presumably this thing is going to slowly make its way across the map and we have to kill everything that tries to kill it on the way. Let's get our team in here. And find out. Can we learn anything about this right now? Cannot be set on fire, unaffected by smoke. The train moves forward two spaces each turn, but will be destroyed if it is blocked. So we can't have anything in front of it or attacking it from the sides. We also can't push it. Which would make sense, because it has to stay on the rails. Okay, then. Does that mean it starts by moving forward two tiles? Which would make this a really terrible place for our tank to be placed? Because if it moves forward two tiles, it would be blocking him. Let's just swap those to be safe. We don't know exactly how this works, but the tank, the punching mech can move around him, but the tank can't shoot through him, so we'll stand him there just to be sure. And let us confirm our deployment. Mission start. 
Another time pod. All right. Starting by egging our artillery. Jumping into the acid. Blocking the train tracks. Okay, so it doesn't move right away, so that's good to know. This is not a great situation to be in all around, though. Now, on the plus side, we know that the Alpha Firefly attacks before the Leaper. So if we shoot the artillery here, we can attack the spider for one or three damage, which will kill him outright, and move this guy onto the spawn, which will also kill that Leaper. I might want to just kill him, which I can't easily do if he moves, but we'll have to see. Then we can punch him with the punching mech to clear out this guy completely. Does this move the time pod? I don't think so. I don't think the time pod gets pushed. Now, is there a way we can kill this guy in one go? I don't think so. I think we just have to get him out of the way of the train. Now, that's a question, too. If we burrow him under the train, does he come back up in the same place and ruin our day no matter what we try here? He might, and I hope he doesn't, because there's kind of no way around that for us here. Now, is there a better plan that kills more of these guys? I don't think so. We can do basically everything except for him. We can leave him weak, but he'll help us by killing the Leaper, so that's not terrible. The other problem is this spider egg here. The more little minions we let live, the more problems we're going to run into. I think the play here is still going to be, though, artillery this tile. Pushes him onto the spawn point and has him kill that leaper for us, because he goes first. We can then have our punching mech get rid of our burrower here by socking him one in the face. which gets him out the way. Then we can move our tank and shoot this egg. I don't know if that's necessarily better, but it's the only way we can get rid of the egg here. We're gonna go pick up the time pod, just to make sure we have it, since we have that extra move anyway. And I think that killing the egg here is still gonna be good overall for us, even if it does mean our tank is kind of in an inefficient position. So, let's end our turn and see what happens. Hopefully this doesn't come back to destroy our train. There he is. Okay. So we now have a Blood Scion, which is really not that big a deal. We have a 4 health Alpha Firefly block in the way we have to get rid of, and we have a 1 health Alpha Burrower to get rid of, which is not that big of a problem either. So, question is, how do we want to get rid of these guys? I can move up and punch the Alpha Firefly no problem. I think what we're going to do is do that. Punch him with the Punching Mech. Artillery is going to come around here and bomb out the Blood Scion. Cannon Mech comes and shoots him from the side. I think that makes the most sense. It brings our tank mech back into the fray, so they'll be more useful after that. They'll be in a better position for the future here. And it means that everyone else can do what they need. Since we have an additional movement here, the fact that I'm pushing myself in front of the train tracks doesn't matter, because I can just move myself back out of the way again. And we'll end our turn. All right, Alpha Burrower goes over to the side in the acid. Not a good plan for you, dude. All right, and the rest of these guys should be fairly straightforward to clear out. Whether or not we kill the Alpha Hornet is really the big question here, because I can pretty easily kill the Leaper. Our artillery can one-shot the Burrower, but given the positioning here, we may not be able to kill the Alpha Hornet as well. Now, our tank could jump into the line here, but can't get into a position where it can attack the Leaper because the train's in the way. The... 
I mean, the tank could come over here and shoot us and just bounce us off that guy, but since he does two damage, that would kill us outright. So that's not a great plan. Uh, the artillery could kill him, but then we can't easily kill the Alpha Burrower because he's going to need at least a three damage shot to kill him, and our tank only hits for two in a single shot, which would not kill him outright because it would only do four instead of five. All right, I think we'll I think we'll let go for just pushing the Hornet out the way, and we'll kill the rest of these guys. So artillery, you're going to come around the side here and shell him for six. Very nice. That acid effect really makes it easy to kill some of these big enemies. We're going to sock it to him for 8 damage with a single punch. And Silica is going to move over and shoot this guy out the way. We could take another move, but we don't actually need it. So we're going to end our turn here. There might have been a play that allowed us to kill all three of them, but I'm not too worried about it. We don't need the experience anymore. Everyone's maxed out. And that is the final turn. Mission complete. The train is reported in. It reached its destination without further incident. Well done, Commander. All right, we got two more defame, two more corporate reputation from that train, and we also protected the time pod. What's in the time pod? I don't know what this is. A heavy rocket. Fire a projectile that heavily damages a target and pushes adjacent tiles. Interesting. It's like the artillery strike, but as a cannon projectile that deals three damage by default. So we could use that and upgrade it to do five damage, which would be a pretty crazy high damage projectile, which might be worth having, honestly, but we'd lose the ability to reposition and then shoot again and push people with our repositioning, allowing us to get out of being tied down. I kind of like that dash ability on our tank. We also get an extra reactor core, which will be super helpful. And we've secured our third region here. Not bad. So, question is really, do we want to keep the boosters or apply the heavy rocket? The heavy rocket's okay. It's a little bit more damaging than our current cannon. We're probably never going to have the power to fully upgrade it. Because if we want to use this thing to full effect, we need another four power in there. We might be able to get that at the end of this stage by just pumping all of our corporate rep into power cores, which is what we usually do, so it's not unreasonable that that would happen. But we'd really have to pump power into this thing just to make it a single shot weapon that's worth having. And I kind of like the fact that this guy is able to do more precise strikes and maneuver around if we need to. So I'm going to leave the boosters on there. If we do put more power into Silica, it'll be bumping up the Taurus cannon damage, so we can do that consistently, I think. Especially with the double shot ability, it makes it quite nice. We may also want to get another weapon for our Titan mech, because right now, Archimedes is doing what they can with just a super powerful punch. Meanwhile, Abe here has all the power in the world. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to put one power into something. Do I want to put it back into Abe so we can use the Gemini missiles again? Or do I want to try and put it into one of our other mechs instead? This might be one case where I actually hold on to that power and just don't use it until the stages are done. Because I don't really have anything I want to put one power into just yet. Because I'm holding on to this so that if we get a weapon for our... Uh, our punching mech, we can put the power there. Otherwise, it'll probably be going into Silica. Just because we want to hold on to it for now. Now, alternatively, I could put the Brute Rockets in here and put the boosters on Archimedes, but because Silica can then boost and then also shoot, this makes it a much more effective combo for Silica. So I think we're going to leave these guys as is. I might put it into health or movement range on Archimedes, just so that they can take advantage of it right away. But then if we don't find an upgrade for Archimedes, it's kind of wasted, which is why I'm hesitant to do that. It's not wasted per se, it's just not as effective as it might otherwise be. The health would be nice though, potentially. Alright, I'm going to continue stalling here and just not use this for now. We're going to finish this chapter, I think, and then spend all of our power once we have all those resources before we go into our final fight. So, with that banked power and 
reputation in hand. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing through some more of Into the Breach for you, and I look forward to see you next time. Until then, bye bye